Hi, welcome back. We're going to, in this episode, have a look at gravity and uh, the concept of what attracts two objects to each other. Uh, in the West Australian curriculum of Year 12 Physics, uh, the two dot points we're going to consider are, are to do with the movement of free-falling bodies in the Earth's gravitational field and an equation which relates uh, the masses and the distances between them to the force of gravitation that is uh, felt by the objects. So let's start by considering two objects, A and B which are going to move apart um, by application of a force in a straight line for each of the objects. If we observe them over a period of time, we'll notice that eventually they will come back together. Now, how would we explain this? Well, Newton would say that since objects uh, can keep moving with a constant velocity until the force acts on them, he would say that objects A and B must exert a force on each other. And what he determined is that the force that they experience is proportional to their masses, the product of the masses, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance that separates them. There is a value g which can be put into that equation or that relationship which gives the force that they experience uh, in newtons. That's a very small value. Now when we're looking at forces in the universe there are four fundamental forces and uh, the gravitational force is one of them. Now the really neat thing about how the universe works if you look at that relationship between the force between two masses, which is a completely different force than the force between two charged particles, you will see that the relationship follows almost the same sort of relationship. It's really neat how the universe functions in that way. But when we consider the electrostatic uh, attractive force and the gravitational attractive force, and if we look at a couple of um, things like fridge magnets sticking on the side of your fridge, now the fridge magnets are being attracted down by the whole mass of the planet. And yet the electrostatic or electromagnetic force holding them to the fridge can overcome that uh, force of gravitation. So this force of gravitation is not that strong a force, but it does keep planets in orbit around stars and that sort of thing. So let's now consider uh, that we know the mathematics works. Um, it actually got humankind up to the moon and, and that sort of thing. So we know that the mathematics works, but what causes the force? Now Newton, unfortunately, uh, didn't explain it. He just found a uh, mathematical relationship between the masses and distances between them, which, as I said, worked perfectly. How about if we consider the fact that um, if these two objects weren't travelling through flat space, but they were travelling, say, around the surface of the Earth, which is a curved surface. So what, what we would be observing is the fact that they're not actually being attracted to each other. They're just travelling over a curved surface. Einstein loves that. He thinks that's a great idea. So what he came up with is that the curvature of space can tell matter how to move and the fact that matter can tell space how to curve. Now we've got a way of explaining why objects are gravitationally attracted to each other. Now if you'd like to make a curved space simulator, if you buy a metre of um, lycra from a fabric store, they'll sell it to you in a, uh, a length of a metre but a width of one and a half metres, and if you cut it in the uh, way that I've just shown there and then stitch up those folds and then uh, fold them around some irrigation pipe which you make into a square with some legs, you will be able to make a curved space simulator. Now with this curved space simulator, you can make objects orbit a central mass that you may place in it. If you video this central uh, mass and, and an orbiting object and, and if it was going in a circular path and you um, made, made some measurements, you can use a spreadsheet to calculate um, some information about what we're looking at. And what we'll tell you is how stiff or how, how hard it is to curve space. Um, if you'd like some information about how to um, make this curved space simulator and uh, you'd like me to provide the uh, spreadsheet that you can use to analyse any um, observations that you will make, please contact me.